Before we head back out to the world map, there is something that I kind of uh, fast forwarded through when we were in Calm. Because um, what, if, once you get the PHS, go back into the inn that you stayed at to hear Claw's flashbacks. Go upstairs and uh, go to this cabinet over here. And there's an item in it, but you can't reach it. So, yeah, keep on mashing X. Can't reach it. Can't reach it. Can't reach it. After you hit X five times, Cloud kicks the cabinet and you get a Mega Elixir. This is easily one of the... I think this is one of the... Wait. Yeah, this is one of the best items in the entire game. This is the best recovery item. Fully restores everyone's HP and MP. And you can use it whenever. You aren't tied to save points or the world map like you are with tents. No, you can just use it like in battle or just like mid-dungeon or really anywhere. Hey everybody, Dutzels here and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VII. Almost said Dark Souls 2 right there. Last time, we departed Midgar, heading towards Calm, and we got to hear Cloud tell the story about how he and Sephiroth revisited his hometown of Nibelheim to solve a problem with one of the reactors where there are, like, monsters and stuff being made in inside of it. Uh, we also got to see the backstory of, of some of the flashbacks that we had at the Sector 1 reactor back on our very first mission. And we also got to kind of see Sephiroth start to go crazy when he started- when we all started to learn more about what or er, who or what Genova is. Still don't- still can't really tell, even right now, but uh, yeah. We also gained access to something new called the- okay, Red 13, gotta level up. We got something called the PHS which allows us to swap out any party member at any time during the overworld. And something important that you might not think of, but is actually really important to know, is that characters that aren't in your party will still gain experience from the battles you fight. I think it's something like they gain 70% of your experience. So yeah. When, uh, whenever, so if the game ever forces you to switch characters, then uh, don't worry, they're not going to be underleveled. I did also grab some new magic. I grabbed some new materia in um, in Calm, so I'm going to put that on Aerit. I'm going to put, um, Cloud, what do you have? You have Lightning and All Restore. Um, maybe I'll give you... I'll give Aerith heal. Cloud, you, you can you can keep on going physical for now. You're fine physical. Remember, Cloud's the protagonist. He's the jack of all trades. Even more so than Red 13. Because you kind of have to be when you are the main character and you'll be in pretty much everyone's party at all times. But now, our question is, where do we go from... Oh god, one of these guys. Okay. Now our question is, where do we go from Call? Well, we heard that people were, like, talking about, like, seeing a man in a black, in a black coat, or something like that. We also heard of a guy who apparently worked in somewhere called the Mithril Mines. So, that could be somewhere we could go, but, um, let's just keep on exploring just whatever space we have. Now, the... Aerith has a spell called Poisana. That's from the that's from the heal material we equipped. Poisana heals poison. Pretty simple right there. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Also got Matcher Magic through enemy skill, which is basically just a big old magical nuke by this point in the game. All right, thanks to PS4, I mean not PS4, PS1 Poppin, we got a new location, a little farm, and there's also a swamp over there. Look at, look at the big birds. Wark. Wark? Wark, wark, wark? Um, hmm, what shall I say to you? Wark.
Beautiful. Beautiful. Received the Choco slash Maga Materia. This isn't any ordinary materia. No. We unlocked another color of materia. Meat. Summon materia. Summons are incredibly powerful attacks that you can only use once per battle. You could think of them like Z moves from Pokemon. You know, they're just, well. I. Wait, are they only used once per. I think. Okay. I think they might only be used once. Or you can only use a summon once per battle. Or it might be tied to how many levels you have in that particular. In that particular summon, like it is for all. However, they still come at a pretty large uh, PP cost. I mean, not uh, MP cost. 14 MP for Choco slash Mog attack. Yeah, that's a little, a little steep. Ac actually, no, that's not that steep right now. Uh, yeah, this is an attack that attacks all opponents. I'm pretty sure all summons attack all opponents. It sometimes causes stop. Stop is basically just. Well, it stops the enemies from doing anything. And hold on, there's something that I'm... Nope, never mind. Alright, so we can see that this place is called Chocobo Farm. Work, work? Work, work? No, okay. Thinking across in the marshes? Uh, sure. Hmm, then it'll probably be safer for you to get a Chocobo. That's where you can zip through the marshes with the chocobo. It's the only way to avoid being attacked by the Midgar Zolom. Midgar Zolom? It's a serpent-like creature over 30 feet tall. It detects the footsteps of anyone in the marshes. And then BAM! It attacks! To avoid that, buy a chocobo at me and Choco Billy's Chocobo Farm. To purchase a chocobo, please talk to my grandson. He's in the chocobo stables at the far right end of the farm. Nice sales pitch. Turned it into a sales pitch. Looking for an inn? No. I guess that's that. <sighs> Can't just go into this guy's bedroom. Oh well. Alright, Choco Billy. Let's see what you got here. Can I buy a bird? Do you want a chocobo? Mmm, gimme. You old folks are out of luck. Old, old folks? We're all out of chocobos, and I'm taking care of the ones out there for someone else. You know, if you really want a chocobo, you should go out and catch one. Want to know how to catch a chocobo? Um, three options. Where are they? How do I catch one? And what else? Where are they? You might, you may, you see those claw marks out there? Wild chocobos will appear in those areas. Yeah, you might have saw that as we went into Chocobo Farm. There were spots on the world map where there were like claw marks. But if you don't have chocobo lure, they won't come out. They're very cautious by nature. Chocobo lure? Chocobo lure is a type of materia which attracts chocobos. If you equip this, they'll come to you, but without it, they won't appear. Want to know how to catch a chocobo? Okay, so that's where are they? How do I catch one? A wild chocobo always appears with other monsters, but you won't be able to catch it because of the monsters. That's why you must defeat the monsters first before you catch the chocobo. And then... Wild chocobos are really cautious. They'll run away from the smallest things. But if you use greens, they'll focus on them and won't run away. Want to know how to catch a chocobo? Okay, so, so far we've got, you can go to the places with the claw marks with a chocobo lure materia and to and defeat all the other monsters to catch the chocobo. And to keep the chocobo from running away, you give it some greens. Anything else? Whatever you do, don't make them angry. They're usually calm, but if you get them angry, you'll get hurt. Oh, and remember, once you get off a chocobo, it'll escape. So, yeah, don't get off of them, I guess. 
Well then, shall we get down to business? Say the cho- How much gil do I have? Do I even have 2,000? Oh, I've ate this. <laughs> Why did I think I didn't have enough gil? I got four times. Boom. Wouldn't hurt to buy some greens either. How fast a choke will finish eating depends on what type of greens you feed him. There are a lot of different types of greens. Each of them have their own special effects. Let's go down the list. The Mimic- Ooh. I'll go over Mimic Greens later. There's the Curiel Greens, which occupy Chocobos for 5 turns. There's the Pasana Greens, which reduce their fleet chance to 20%. There's the Tantal Greens, which occupy them for 3 turns. Uh, there's the Kraka- the Kraka Greens, that reduces fleet chance to about 30%. Or 0.33, whatever a third is, and then there's the Grisol Greens, which occupy Chocobos for two thir with for two turns. So really, the best ones you should get are the Curial Greens. They are expensive, though. I'm not gonna buy the Mimic Greens, although there is something that I really want to talk about uh, when it comes to the Mimic Greens. All right, who are you? Wasn't it really expensive? Don't be mad at my brother or grandpa. There isn't mom and dad. Oh, no! Don't make this into a sad story. Ever since mom and dad died, it's been like this. Thanks. Alright, let's beat it. Got the chocobo scratches. Let's grab our, um... Cloud, you're the only one with materia available. Luck plus one, Chugbalure. Let's start running around, I guess. A Chocobo! I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up, and I'm gonna let you listen to this amazing music. You can't be serious. You can't be serious. Did that really just happen? Well then... Yeah, chocobos are pretty skittish ones. Mandragoras are definitely enemies. Uh, I'm not doing much damage. How much health do you guys have? Do you specialize in, a, specialize in a specific defense? 140, oh wait, 120 health, slow dance, okay. Okay. I just, I just love the songs. That's why I'm making the battle longer than it has to be. Okay, so we failed that one. Maybe maybe I should move those greens into the front of my inventory. Alright, I moved them to the front of my inventory. So, Aerith, come on. Item, Curio Greens. Alright, Alpha Dunk, Chocobo. Boom. Now, let's take care of these Alpha Dunks. Alright, yeah, Alpha Dunks, those are elephants, they use shower, it attacks you. All the enemies at this point. No, 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 don't! D d d <sighs> are you serious? That's what happens? Okay. That's really stupid, actually. So, let me get this straight. The Chocobo ran away before my turn came around before I could use the Curio Greens. So instead of just holding on to them, Aerith launched them at the Alpha Dunk, which gave it 100 health. Oh boy, time to buy some more greens. Before we start to get any more, um, any more of these uh, Chocobos, there is something that I want to show you with these particular enemies over here. These ones are called Moos. And I am gonna just sit right here because, as you might expect, 
there is an enemy skill that is associated with them. I'm just kind of waiting for them to do it. Okay, okay, they, they just did it, they just did it, alright. Um, you, you weren't able to see right there because, uh, just freaking, uh, out. Yeah, but, um, wait, no, don't put- Oh, I hit poison. Oops. Okay, Red 13's dead. I, I'm kind of panicking right now, just because, like, he's dead. Um, yeah, these Moo guys, they're, they have attacks called, like, Sewer and Hot Spring, which... Okay, there it is again, L4 Suicide. That is an attack that can only be learned from, de from fighting a Moo. Alright, let's go ahead and heal Red up right now. Okay, let's talk about L4 Suicide. Because this is a very interesting move. Because, um, you know how enemies have levels, and usually that doesn't mean anything, because, you know, it doesn't matter if an enemy has a level, because they're gonna just do the same damage to you regardless. And, you know, they just have their health value, so their level's kind of irrelevant, but, like, L4 Suicide actually does damage based on enemies' levels, yeah. Causes critical slash small with levels in multiples of four. If if your if the enemy that you're targeting well if there's an enemy that is a multiple of four, then you'll do a whole lot of damage to it. Um, yeah. What I wrote down in my notes is that it brings them near death and inflicts mini. So yeah. This is where the Mimic Greens come in, because if you use... Okay, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna preface this by saying, this thing that I'm going to talk about is not worth it. However, if you get some Mimic Greens and give them to a Chocobo, the Mimic Greens will only be occupied... Well, they will only be occupied for one turn, but it will allow them to use a special attack called Chocobuckle. This is a very, very, very elusive attack. Because the Chocobo, you know, has to be a level that's a multiple of 4. So that would be like 12 or 16 or something. And Chocobo's battles in le Chocobo's levels in battle are based on the enemies that it is accompanying. So you have to get a chocobo with the right combination of enemies to have it be a level that is divisible by 4. Then you have to use L4 suit then you have to use the mimic greens on it, which costs 1500 gil by the way and only keep them occupied for one turn. You have to use L4 suicide on the chocobo and then finally It'll counterattack with the elusive Chocobuckle spell. How much damage does it do? Well, that depends, because the Chocobuckle increases with damage every time you flee an enemy. Yeah, it's kinda dumb, but like, uh. Yeah, that, 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 that's all I have to say, it's kinda dumb. So. I would not recommend going for Chocobuckle. So I'm just I'm just gonna keep on continuing to search for a Chocobo. Come on, land those greens, land those greens, land those greens. Alright, they're on red 13, red 13, you're the best best dexterity. Alright, boom. Hero greens. Alright. Keep that one occupied. Kill the alpha dunks. Yeah, it's still occupied. Still occupied. Still occupied. Kill, kill the alpha dunk, please, please, please. Oh no! This, oh, there we go. Okay, caught a chocobo. Boom. How to ride a chocobo? Press circle to get off. Chocobos will escape whenever play, player dismounts. Don't dismount them. Yep, they are adorable. Same controls as just regular field stuff, you know. Just move around, use the stick or control buttons to look around, you know. I got a clip of a chocobo in the trailer. 
They do not... If you are on a chocobo, then you will not encounter any enemies in the overworld. And here is this swamp area, and you have something slithering around. I'm gonna... Oh, actually, hold on, it's gaining on me. Okay. If you are on a chocobo, you can now outrun that snaky thing. Alright, now we're past the swamp, so I'm gonna let the chocobo go for now. Now we are susceptible to wild encounters, but I'm actually gonna save right here. I'm gonna save into a different file. I'm gonna save into file 3, actually. And I want to show you something. Let's see what happens if we fight this thing. Yeah! Meet the Midgar Zola! Alright, let's go ahead and see how much health this thing has. It does 157 damage with one attack, so that, you know, that's nice. Uh, Midgar Zola on level 26 with 4,000 HP. Yeah. It's a bad idea to run to run into the swamp without a chocobo, because, you know, you're just gonna completely fall apart if you do, so I'm just gonna try to run, actually. Is it gonna let me run? I honestly don't think it's gonna even want me to... Actually, hold on. Let me put this in fast forward. I could probably do this. Oh. Oh, wait, I killed... Oh, Aerith is dead. Wait, do I have a... I don't have any Phoenix Downs, crap. Well, that, well that's, that's why I made an alternate save file. If you are feeling rather courageous, or maybe you're a little later in the game, so you, you have the resources to do it, but Midgar Zolom actually has an attack that you can learn from it. There is an attack called Beta. This is a very powerful fire attack. However, it is used as a counterattack, so you so you can't just like run into the battle, get hit by a beta, and then run out. No, you gotta stay in and attack it, and it'll probably just kill you anyway, so... I wouldn't go for it, especially right now, but maybe a little later, if you really need a stronger fire attack, then uh, you can come back here and grab beta, but... I mean, honestly, you'll probably level up your fire materia and your characters enough anyway, so you probably wouldn't need it, but whatever. Alright, let's continue on into this cave. D did Sephiroth do this? Well, Sephiroth. That's kind of rude, you know. We were just going through all that hassle, catching wild chocobos, throwing random plants at random elephants and stuff, to get past a Midgar Zolom, which I had to reset a save file for, and then you just go over here and just impale one on a tree. Real classy, Sephiroth. It's a power that we should respect. Our enemy. Is someone that could do this? I mean, in all fairness, Sephiroth was level 50 and the Zolom was level 26. So, yeah. Alright, let's just continue on. And, it, it, yeah, we, that was just kind of one, one uh, screen right there. But, uh, yeah, we, we, uh... Blech. We crossed that swamp, we caught a chocobo, and uh, we didn't fight a Midgar- Well, we did fight a Midgar Zolom, technically, but uh, I didn't want to. And uh, we got some new- uh, we got new attacks, or we got a new attack. What am I saying right now? What I'm trying to say is, I think that the, there are things that should be done in next episode that I don't want to do right now, because it might take more than half an hour, so... Uh, yeah, we are going to go into this cave next time. Uh, see you guys then. When's this episode going to come out? Is this one going to be a, mo a Tuesday or a Friday? This one's going to be Tuesday. See you Friday!